Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today I'm going to show you how to crochet this giant pumpkin crochet floor poof. This pumpkin works up super quick because we are using a nine millimeter crochet hook and three strands of yarn. So 45 stitches is about one inch of this pattern. So it is super quick to do. And plus it is super usable. It makes a great floor rest or stool in your house. If English isn't your first language, you can click this gear on the video and scroll through to find your preferred dialect. And if you want to follow along with a written pattern, all of my patterns are available on my website, secretyarnery.com. And you don't have to worry about being able to read a pattern. All of my patterns are written in plain English, just like I was sitting there right beside you. To make your giant crochet pumpkin floor poof, you will need yarn. I'm using regular worsted weight acrylic. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So I'm using three different shades of orange that I have on hand. I'm also throwing in a little bit of green because in Kenya, pumpkins rarely come completely orange. So for me, I'm tossing in a bit of green just to represent my pumpkins. And you will also need a little bit of a wood color for the stem. So for your pumpkin, you will need 10 skeins of yarn, so three of each kind and one of the green if you're using green, or just 10 skeins of orange four worsted weight acrylic. So 1,000 grams is enough for a very large pumpkin, and you'll just need a tiny little bit of your natural wood color, just a, like a few meters, not much at all. And same with your green, that is completely optional if you want to use green. We'll be using an eight millimeter crochet hook for the stem and a nine millimeter crochet hook for your pumpkin. If you are doing a chainless foundation, that uh, those are all the hooks you need. If you are doing a foundation chain and then working into it, get a larger hook. So this is a 10 millimeter if you are making a chain and then doing your stitches into the chain. But I'm gonna show you how to use just the nine millimeter and chainless foundation, and I know you can do it, so just give it a try. You will also need two stitch markers, only if you are new. These will just keep track of your beginning and ending stitch, and a pair of scissors, and a needle for sewing in your ends. If you find this helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more crochet tips and tricks. Here are the timestamps. You can jump back into where we left off, and let's get started. We're going to start by using three strands of yarn at a time. So I just get the center pull from my skein of yarn, just using it from the center there of all three skeins. And then we're just going to be working it at the same time. So I'm going to show you how to do chainless foundation. I'll also link a tutorial where I show you how to do it with just one strand of yarn. So it might be a little easier to get the hang of. What is so great about chainless foundation is your beginning row will look like your last row, or your starting chain will look like your last row. It'll have those cute little Vs. So it's definitely worth trying. What you want to do is leave longer tails, because we're going to use these for sewing in later. Now to start, we want to leave a longer tail of two strands, and then we're going to use our third strand. So our two strands here, we're going to use that for sewing our pumpkin together at the end. So about 18 inches, 24 inches is plenty. And now we're going to start the chainless foundation. So there are my tails where the, all three of them are. So I'm just going to start by making a slip knot any which way you normally do. Just a long enough tail so you can sew that short guy in nicely with a needle later. You want to shrink that down and pop it onto your hook. So I'm going to be using my nine millimeter. If you are doing a chain, you can just use a larger hook for your chain, a 10 millimeter, and you want to chain 45. So shrink that yarn down onto your hook, and we're going to chain four. And this is for chainless foundation. So there is one, two, three, and four. So now we have our cute V's. We can see them nice and easy. That is our first stitch right there. So that is where we're going to work into. So wrap your yarn like you're doing a normal double crochet. Go into that first chain. Bring your yarn back through. Bring your hook up a bit. We want that loop that's on our hook to match our other loops. So pull your hook up to get this loop here larger and chain one. 
Now go ahead, we want to just pinch that chain that we just made. We want to hold it open with our finger and thumb because that's where we're going to work into next time. So I'm just holding that open with my finger and thumb. And now we're just going to do our double crochet. So we're doing our chain and now we're doing our double crochet. So wrap your yarn, turning the hook and doing your double crochet. Still holding that open, that chain we made. Wrapping my yarn, going right in to where I'm holding it open, just sliding all that onto my hook and bringing my yarn back. Pull your hook up so it's the same, that loop is the same tension on your hook as the other loops, like that. And chain one. So just take off that one loop. Now wiggle your fingers right there. So we have what would be one strand in front and what would be two strands behind. But for this, it's three strands in front, six strands behind. We're still going to hold it open with our finger and thumb. And now we can do our double crochet. So wrap, turn your hook, and your one double crochet. Wrap, go into where we're holding it open, sliding all that onto your hook, bringing your yarn back, pulling your hook up, because we want that loop to be the same tension on our hook, the same tightness on our hook. Wrap and take off that first bit of yarn, those first three strands. Now hold that open with your finger and thumb and do your double crochet. So wrap and take off two, wrap and take off two. So we are doing our chain and our double crochets together. So it's a bit slow to work, but you don't have to go into your chain. So wrap into where we're holding it open, sliding all of that onto our hook, grabbing your yarn and bringing it back, pulling your hook up so that loop slides the same as the rest of the loops on your hook. Wrapping your yarn, turning your hook, and chaining one. Holding that stitch open, or holding that chain open with your finger and thumb, and doing your double crochet. So you can pause the video and keep working along. You want to have a total of 45 stitches. Even if you're doing your chain, you want a total of 45 stitches. So pause the video, keep working along doing your chain and then double crochet, chain and then double crochet, all the way along until you have 45 chains. And to count your chains, just look at the top, those cute little V's that we have. And our first V is right here. This guy counts as our first stitch right there. So that is one. So one, two, three, four, and five. You want to keep going until you have 45. For this tutorial, I am just going to be doing a sample. So I'm just going to be doing these 10 stitches here. So that finishes our first row. To start second row, there's two different kinds of rows we're going to be doing, two different kinds. One is regular double crochet and one is front post double crochet. So our first row is going to be regular double crochets. So we're going to start just by doing a chain one and just kind of pulling up a larger loop and turning your work. Wrap your yarn, we're going to go into that very first stitch right here. So our chain one does not count as a stitch in this pattern. So into that very first stitch one double crochet and into that stitch we just made right here pop in a stitch marker if you are new that marks our first stitch of the row and also the last stitch when we're coming back if you are an experienced crocheter you do not have to put in a stitch marker and now one double crochet into each stitch all the way along you just want to keep an eye that you have brought out those three strands of yarn if you haven't you want to go back to that stitch and do it again so we're going to be doing one double crochet into each of these stitches all the way along as little dimples each of those dimples is a stitch so just pop your hook in and one double crochet into each so you can pause the video keep working along and i'll meet you when we get to the end of our row at the end of our row, we have our chain left, and our chain counts as a stitch. So we want to go in to that chain, two strands of that stitch on the top of our hook. Doesn't really matter where, just get into that chain, two strands on the top, and make your last double crochet. So that finishes your second row.
To start your third row, we are going to chain one and turn our work again. Wrap your yarn and into that very first stitch, one double crochet, the same one where we did our chain one from, right at the very beginning. And now we're going to put a stitch marker into the stitch we just made. Now pop a stitch marker into that stitch that we just made. And now we have marked our first and last stitch of our row, so we know where we're going to end. So you can pause the video and keep working along. One double crochet into each stitch all the way along, and I'll meet you when we get to the end of this row. At the end of our row, our last stitch is where our stitch marker is. That was pretty handy, right? So that finishes the end of our row. We can pop that stitch marker out, and now this is how we're going to do our front post double crochet row. So chain two, one, and two, turn your work, and now this counts, this chain two counts as our first stitch. So we can pop a stitch marker into the top of that chain two. And now we're going to do front post double crochets all the way along. That's going to give us a nice little seam on our pumpkin. So wrap your yarn and we're going to go in between those two first stitches and out after the stitch. So we're just going to be putting that stitch on our hook. So wrap your yarn down into your work and up to the front right after that stitch and do your double crochet. So we're going to go down before the next stitch and up to the front after. So wrap your yarn down into your work and up to the front. Wrap and do your double crochet. So wrap and take off two, wrap and take off two. Always looking to make sure you brought those three strands out with you. Wrap your yarn. We're going to go down in before the next stitch and up right after it. One double crochet, so it's a front post double crochet. And we're going to do that for each stitch going all the way across. I'm going to be doing a front post double crochet around each stitch all the way along. So there's our next one. One front post double crochet. So you go down before the next stitch and up so that stitch is on your hook and then just do your regular double crochet. But it turns out to be a front post double crochet. So pause the video and keep working along and I'll meet you when you get to the end of your row. At the end of our row we have that stitch. We're just going to work around that last stitch right there. There is our last front post double crochet. You can count your stitches to make sure you have enough, or another thing you can do is count your stitches every one foot or so, because a little bit in and a little bit out, it won't make too much of a difference. So don't feel that you have to be counting your stitches every single row. It doesn't matter. Ideally, you begin with the 45 and you will end with the 45. Anything in between doesn't really matter. So if it starts looking too skinny, go ahead and count, add some stitches on either end, and if it's looking too wide, go ahead and count and do some decreases wherever you feel like it. Then go ahead, pop your stitch marker out, chain one, and turn your work. And now we can work back into this row here. See that nice little detail we just did, those front posts? So now we can do double crochets and then alternate doing a front post row whenever you like. The trick to it is when you're going to be doing the front post, you have to have done an even number of double crochet rows so that when you're doing your front post, they are all down facing down. So if you can't see any of your front posts, you can go ahead and do front posts. If you see your front posts, you have to do a row of double crochet and then turn your work before you do the front post row. So even numbers of double crochets in between the rows for your front post, and you'll just keep going alternating that, either doing four rows or six rows or eight rows of double crochet and then a front post row. It can totally be unique, whatever you want to do for yours, and then keep going until your pumpkin is the size you want it to be.
you will know your pumpkin is the right size when it is twice as long as it is tall. So for me, my pumpkin is 20, one and a half inches, let's say 22 inches tall. So it will be 44 inches across. Another way you can do it is you just fold it in half. You want it to look like a square. So if you fold it in half and the width is the same as the height, that is perfect, it's all you need to do. If you keep going and make yours wider than it is tall, then you'll have a more short and squat pumpkin. If you make it narrower, you'll have a more upright or skinnier pumpkin, but each pumpkin can be different, so don't worry about counting your rows. So when your pumpkin is the right size and your pretty stitches are facing on the outside, we are ready to join up our pumpkin. So just fold your pumpkin in half so you have your two sides side by side. And we're just going to go in to that very first starting chain. It's like a bigger stitch all by itself. So I have my stitch on my hook. I'm just going to pop in my hook straight into that loop on the second side. And we're going to just slip stitch to start. So now we are ready to join our two sides. So into that first stitch on the first side and into the first stitch on the second side, we're going to crochet together those two sides. So into the first stitch on the first side, into the first stitch on the second side, we're going to do one single crochet to join those two sides together. And now matching up each stitch as we go along. So the first side and the second side. We're going to go into both of those matching stitches. One single crochet and into the next pair. One single crochet. So this is how we're going to be joining up the side of our pumpkin. One single crochet into each stitch of both sides. Don't worry too much if your stitches don't line up by the time we get to the end of this row. It'll be alright, it's pumpkin. And we're going to be cinching together both ends. So don't worry about it. Just pause the video and keep working along. Doing one single crochet into both of those stitches all the way along and I'll meet you when we get to the end of your row. When you get closer to the end, or joining up the end of your row, you can just line up those last two stitches. So I have four stitches on the side closest to me, and I have five stitches on the other side. So I'm just going to skip one of those stitches to line them up. So don't feel like every stitch has to get crocheted into. It's just a pumpkin. Everything's great. So just go in and match them up approximately all the way until you get to the end of your row. Now I am at the end of my row, so into those last two stitches on each side, those guys, my last single crochet, and chaining one. So there's where I fudged my stitch count. You can't really totally see, plus it's a pumpkin. So, so don't worry about it. Now we're gonna cut our tail. We wanna leave one tail super long, or even a couple tails super long. So you can cut one off regular. We could just sew that guy in, just a regular length tail. And the other two I am going to leave quite long because I want to use them to cinch in my pumpkin. So I probably left about three feet, but you probably don't need that much. But for me, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So now I'm just going to pull my hook up and my yarn through and snug that down to secure. Now we are ready to sew together the end of our pumpkin. So you can go ahead and thread your needle. I'm just going to be using a blunt tip for this because we are going to be gathering our fibers together so we don't have to go through anything just yet. So thread your needle and I'm just going to pick up a few strands of yarn every so often. So there's the one. I'm going to jump over, like skipping a row, and pick up the loops of another stitch. So I've gone in 
yeah, skipping a row. So every other row, I'm going to pick up a few strands of yarn or half of a stitch. I'm not worried about cinching it together just yet. So you can pause the video and just keep working along, just picking up a few strands every inch or so all the way along. Then when we're done, we can just pull all that together and our pumpkin will shrink right up. So pause the video, keep working along, and I will meet you when you have gone all the way around the end of your pumpkin. Now I have gotten back to where we started. We get to cinch together our pumpkin. So that is as closed as mine can get because of all that chunky yarn. So just make sure it's as snug as it can be. I can also go straight over closer to where we joined, just so my yarn is almost in the same spot. Cinch up that last bit. And now I can knot these two tails. So that tail we didn't use, we can do a big knot there to hold all this together. Just like that. You're going to go ahead and do this on the other side as well, although one side we're going to leave open like this for our stem, and one side at the bottom we're going to put a little circle. So the side that we're going to stitch shut, we're just going to pick up some yarn from the one side. Just three strands or whatever you used for your one stitch, and we're going to go across to the other side and pick up three strands again and then cinch that shut and we're just going to work kitty corner so I'm going to go down and find three strands of yarn from down below and keep it snug this time and then go across and find three strands from the other side. And we're just gonna do this until the center of this pumpkin side is full or put together. Go back down, picking up three strands, holding it, picking up three strands. So we're just going kitty corner, kitty corner. And across three strands. And across three strands. So just going back and forth, one side to the other side. Just picking up those three strands that you can get to, anything that's available. Grabbing them, cinching them, and then looking for whatever is loose. So there's some loose down in there. I'm going to get some of those strands and just cinch those together. So you can pause the video and just keep working this until your pumpkin is closed. So now my pumpkin is closed. If you go to all of these little rows in there, they're all stuck. I've picked up all of them. So now I'm going to switch to a sharp tip needle. If you don't have a sharp tip needle, it's absolutely fine. Just keep using your blunt tip. You'll just have to sew it in a little bit more thoroughly than you do if you have a sharp tip. And I have these linked in the description box down below if you want to grab your own pack of 25 sharp tip yarn needles. So then thread your needle one strand at a time and just poke it into the center like that so we can knot it on the inside. You can do that for all three of your tails. So my super long strands, I'm going to cut shorter just so I can knot them easier. And then I'm just going to pick two of these tails and tie them together with a triple knot. So one, two, and three, and then same with the other tail. So all three tails are getting tied. There we go. Now we don't have to really worry about cutting those off, but you can if you like. We can even tie all three together a couple times. Two, and three. 
So there is our pumpkin joined and stuck together on the one side. Now we are going to loop our tail around the top side and cinch it together the exact same way, but leaving that center hole open. So now go ahead and lace your yarn tail through the top of your pumpkin, but don't cinch it closed yet. We are going to stuff it before we close it. When you have laced your pumpkin all the way around the top, we are ready to stuff it. To make the stem, grab your neutral color yarn or whatever color you're using for your stem and a smaller hook. I'll be using an eight millimeter. And we're gonna start by making a magic ring. If you don't wanna make a magic ring, you could do a chain three ring as well. So just lay those tails over your non-dominant hand, holding them down on your ring finger with your thumb. Wrap the yarn around your two fingers, making an X. Wrap around the third finger and just hold it underneath your thumb as well. Turn your hand over and you have a short strand and a long strand. Slide your crochet hook, hook side facing down, underneath the short strand and on top of the long strand. So we can just drag it underneath the short strand and turn the hook towards yourself. Everything up on the fat part of your hook. Slowly release your thumb so that long strand can slide. Grabbing the long strand pinching everything, turning your hook, and bringing that or those strands through the loop that was on your hook. There is your magic ring. Chain one, and we're gonna do 12 double crochets into the center of the ring, going over our tail. So you can pause the video and keep working along 12 double crochets into the center of your ring, working over your tail. And I'll meet you when you have them all done. So there is my 12 double crochets. Now we're gonna grab our tails and pull them to close the center of our ring. Now we have three strands and I'm using acrylic so I can pull nice and snug and get that really closed. So now we're gonna slip stitch right here to join just to finish off that ring. So pop your hook in and slip stitch to join. Make sure you have three strands on your hook and chain one. Now turn your work. We're gonna do front post crochets, front post double crochets around that very first stitch where we are. So we have to find it because our chain is also in the way, but we're just gonna go in and around that very first stitch right there. So wrap your yarn and around that first post one front post double crochet and one front post double crochet around each of these stitches all the way around. Just making sure we always have our three strands of yarn and we're going to do one front post double crochet around each of these stitches. Just take your time and work at them one at a time just putting that whole post or that whole stitch on your hook and one front post double crochet. So pause the video, keep working around and I'll meet you when we get back to where we started. So there is gonna be my last front post double crochet. And we are back to where we started. So I'm gonna slip stitch again to the top of that first stitch right there to join. I'm going to pop it, my hook in and slip stitch and chain one again and turn your work. So now this is going to be the top of our stem. So it looks really cute like it's freshly cut pumpkin. And now we're going to alternate doing front post and back post double crochets for the next round. So wrap your yarn and around that same post, just pop your hook in and bring that post out. Our first front post double crochet. And now we're going to do a back post double crochet around the next stitch. So our hook is going to come in from behind and go back out. So we're just going to be putting our hook <laughs> right there. 
So from behind, wrap your yarn and come in from behind and go back out after that stitch. And now do your double crochet or your back post double crochet. So the next one is front post, so in from the front and out the front. Double crochet around that stitch for our front post double crochet. And our next one is going to be a back post, so we're going to go in from the back and out the back. So you can just even flip your work up so you can just work comfortably like you normally would be. Just manipulate that work or whatever you're working on so you can be comfortable making those back post double crochets and a front post. So we're just going to alternate doing a front post and a back post double crochet all the way around. It'll give us this really nice woody kind of texture. So back post double crochet and front post double crochet. So you can pause the video, keep working your way around, and I'll meet you when we get back to where we started. When you get back to where you started, we can use that extra stitch in the beginning, our little chain, to count as a stitch so we can end with the correct pattern. And if yours ended without needing to do that, that is also totally fine. Don't worry about it. We're making something organic and natural. So I'm just going to slip stitch to join. So I'm just going to go anywhere at the corner beginning of our stem. Popping my hook in wherever it feels like going and doing one slip stitch. Chain one to secure your yarn. And now we're going to cut our tails. I'm going to cut one regular and I'm going to cut two longer. So we can use this to sew our stem onto our pumpkin. So maybe 18 inches or 24 inches, depending on how comfortable you want to be when you are doing your sewing. And now pull your hook up and all that yarn through. Snug that down to secure. Also, while we're here, we can sew in the tails from our magic ring, or we can knot them with our short tail. So I am just going to vote for knotting them. But you, of course, could sew them in if you like. Safety first, so give those a good pull and knot them until it doesn't move. Nice and tight. There we go. If you roll your hand along the side or slide your hand in along the side, you can adjust the look of your pumpkin or how much stuffing you want in each area. So that is how big mine is. You want to stuff it quite firm because if people put their feet on it or sit on it, you want it to still keep a bit of its shape. So now we can cinch it shut. And then you can just cinch it a little bit more when you get close, so just the ones that are sticking up. Just like that. Now we're going to leave this strand attached so we can just go around that last loop again or somewhere into that same stitch area just to kind of hold it in place. Keep it snug shut, just like that. We could always undo this if we want to go back and put in more stuffing, but it does hold it in place while we are working. So our tails, we can just poke inside like that. And our long tail for sewing, we can get it to the outside. And now flip it over. We are ready to start attaching it on the side of our pumpkin. So we're just going to pick a few strands of our pumpkin and go in to our stem and go into our pumpkin and I'm using that blunt tip needle for this. It also has that little bend in it which helps pick it if you need a little bit of help. 
getting it through. So into the pumpkin and into the stem. So you can pause the video and keep working around into some stitches of your pumpkin and through a loop or a stitch of your stem all the way around. We're just snugging it down. So pause the video, keep working around, and I'll meet you when you have attached your stem. When your stem is connected, you're happy with how it looks, just finish up by sewing in your tail. If you end near your orange strand, we can give these a quick tie together. Just pull it tight, it'll go right underneath your stem. When your tails are sewn in, you can just snip them off. And there is your huge floor poof pumpkin. I'm waiting for you in that video right there and stay hooked.